I shall now talk about the most important system software called as the operating system. Before I proceed to tell you what is an operating system and what all it does, I'll start a little way in reverse. I will give you examples of operating system so you'll quickly understand what I am talking about. Example of operating system is Microsoft Disk Operating System. You will not be aware of this. This is being used when we were studying. Okay, The Windows operating system, Windows 7, Windows 10 and so on. The Unix operating system where C was designed. The Linux operating system, some of you, you may be using it. Then we have a number of mobile operating systems like iOS for Apple phones, Android on the other normal phones. On Microsoft phones, we have the Windows operating system and you have the BlackBerry, which is actually not very used now because I think the company is probably not even running. So the best way to understand and look at an operating system is to look at this particular diagram. The font may be small, but I'll tell you what each block is. This stands for hardware. This is the operating system. This is applications and this is user. So if you see at the very highest level is the user. The user is using some application. Let us say he is using the library management software to keep track of who is borrowing books and which books have been borrowed by different people. Now suppose the information of a book has to be recorded on the hard disk of the machine. The application will just give a request to the operating system. The operating system in turn through a software known as the device driver will talk to the hardware. So the lowest level is the hardware. The hardware interacts to the user via number of layers. But the most important layer is the operating system. The operating system ensures that a user is able to use the computer hardware effectively. Now let's try to now discuss the operating system concepts. All right. So what is actually the job of an operating system? The job of an operating system is actually just two words. It is to make the computer usable by making it convenient and efficient to use for a user by providing a medium of communication between the user and the hardware. That means to talk to the hardware, the operating system is in between. So when you're working on your Windows PC, laptop or even an Android phone, it is the Android or the Windows phone which is actually talking to the hardware. You are not directly talking to the hardware. So that is the operating system doing the talking with the hardware for you. The next important function of an operating system is the operating system is known as a resource manager. What are the different resources of a computer? It is the main memory, it is the CPU, it is the files stored, okay, it can be the secondary memory and so on. So what an operating system does is it ensures that all these resources are used efficiently and properly. I'll tell you what this means when we are discussing each of its function in a little bit of detail. Again, I'm trying to tell you, you will have an entire subject called as operating system in your computer science, probably in the fourth or the fifth semester. So this is again similar to the functional diagram of a computer where I am giving you a 50,000 feet high view of what exactly is an operating system. Now let's try to understand how an operating system works. For example, assume I have a web server that means there is a computer which is having a website running on it and hundreds of people put a request or let's say millions of people put a request for something at the same time. It is impossible for the hardware to respond to all of the requests at the same time. So what happens is each user will be responded or serviced based on the availability of resources at that particular point of time. So the operating system ensures that each of the users is satisfactorily serviced by providing him service in a queue or whatever the policy was determined. Okay, now I'll give you one more better example which may be more easy for you to understand. Now what happens is assume I have one PC and I have 10 people connected working to the PC. Now what may happen is all the 10 people assume I running and trying to run a C program. 
Now, a fair computer should give time equally to all the 10 people so that they are able to run that particular process effectively. If it only gives time to one person, the other nine people will starve of any resources. So what the computer does is, it the CPU does in this case is, it tries to give service to different users by giving microseconds to each users in a round robin or in a circular fashion. Now, again, there are other operations called as memory management and process management. I'll talk to you about it in the following slide. Now, let us say we have 20 users and all 20 users suddenly decide to give a print command and they want some document to be printed. Now a printer being just one cannot print all the 20 files at one time. So it is the job of the operating system to put it in a sequence, put it in a queue and based on a certain rules and regulations, it will see that one document at a time is printed and the output is handed over back to the different users. Now let us try to understand the functions or objectives or what all does an operating system do. The most important definition of an operating system is an operating system is a resource manager or a manager of all the hardware on the computer. Now let's understand what is process management in very very brief. Okay. Now say for example I told you earlier there are 30 problems running. Okay and 30 people using the computer. So it is the job. So each of these programs, you can consider it as a process on running on the computer. So it is the job of the CPU to give equal time to all of the people. Or there may be a rule that some people get extra time because they are very special or they're doing important jobs. So all those tasks are handled by the process management module of the operating system. Now let's tell you what is memory management. Say let's say again on a PC I have on one single PC I have a very big program and the program is so big it can't be completely stored on the main memory of the computer for the CPU to execute it. Here what the memory management module or the memory management will do is it will just get that part of the instructions and data which is required to execute. Once that part is executed it will transfer it back to the hard disk and it will take the remaining part and put it onto the main memory. Then again what it will do is suppose we are doing all of us are doing C compiler on one particular machine. There are 50 users trying to write a C program. It does not make sense to have 50 copies of C compiler for everybody. It will just maintain one copy and allow in that same memory space allow all of them to use the C compiler. IO device. IO stands for input output. Now suppose a user is entering something okay and suddenly an error happens the keyboard gets disconnected or the printer suddenly is off. So all those simple tasks are handled by the operating system. That's why if you see if you try to print when your printer is off your operating system will give you a certain message okay detecting that the printer is off. The printer is not smart enough to know that it is on or off. It is the job of the operating system to manage all the input output devices. File system that means all your data, your word documents, your programs are stored in a particular manner in a computer. Now this organizing how to find it, how to it's like you can think of it like a book with a chapters so operating system keeps each of the files like chapters and how to search them how to delete them how to modify them this is all taken care of by the operating system now protection security i'll give you a very simple example let me say five of us are working on connected to one pc it is very important that i don't write a program which goes and destroys what you are doing in the main memory of the computer so the operating system ensures that each of the users work area is protected. I am not going and interfering in your area and you are not interfering in my area and so on. Network management. Today the world is living in a networked environment. So if you see there is a network card. The network card is a means of communicating or connecting one PC or one machine to the other. Now when you are talking from one PC to other there has to be certain rules and regulations of the communication. So the operating system ensures that 
the users are able to talk between different machines it will it will whatever the rules are agreed for transfer of data it will follow that and it will take care of the communication rules or regulation now there is something called distributed computing in distributed computing means suppose i have hundreds of machines okay i could do some some part of work in some machine some part of the thing in other machine some part of the third in third machine so now you need one single operating system to coordinate the work of all the 100 machines or more than 100 machines so there are special operating systems called as distributed operating systems which only run when you have more than one or cluster of machines and it will help all those machines to work as a team so that the user does not get a feeling that he is being treated differently by each of the machines so for the user he'll still get the feeling that he is working on just one machine whereas the work is divided or broken down into a number of components user interface for example if you want to open a file on windows you'll right click open the explorer so that window sorry the windows explorer is an example of a user interface all right interface means between the computer hardware and the user there is a software that software is a user interface it is provided by the operating system so meanwhile what i would like you to do is just go and find out a little bit about what do you understand by open source source sorry open source software what is commercial software with examples what is freeware freemium premium software what is software licensing this is important just to have a decent knowledge so i hope i have given you a fair idea of what is an operating system at your level this is more more than enough you do not need to go beyond this for understanding what is an os